everyone, welcome back to my channel. And today's video is my monthly makes for July. So I didn't get a whole lot of knitting done this month, probably because it was about 100 degrees all the time. Uh, but I did get one sweater finished and that is my gold wing sweater. So this is a pattern by Knit Love Wool and I love how it turned out. So for the upper section of the collar work, I used the Malabrigo Rios yarn in the colorway teal feather, which is sort of like a tonal yarn. So there is some slight variations in it, uh, which gives a little bit of interest. And then for the bottom of the collar work and the rest of the sweater, I used Drops Lima. And this is like a, it's a wool alpaca blend yarn. And the colorway, I believe, was like light gray taupe. Um, so I'm thrilled with how this turns out. I think it looks really, really pretty. Uh, I also love that it has some color work along the cuff. This is the first pattern. Now I did, I've done one other pattern that had color work on the cuff. Um, and then it's finished with an eye cord, which is the first time I've done an eye cord. I don't know that I particularly love that finish. I think if I were to make this sweater again, I would start the color work sooner up and then finish with it like a just traditional like one by one rib in that contrast color. I think that would look pretty cool too. Um, only downsides of the sweater is I think I've made the sleeves too long. I was really, really careful and blocking to not stretch them at all. So right now they look okay. They're just like slightly too long. It comes down to like mid palm when I wear it. Um, so that's fine. I can, I can stand that, but if it stretches out anymore, I think they'll be too long. And so what I've decided to do is if that happens, I'm going to break it further up in the sleeve, um, take out some rows and then graft it back together so that I don't have to redo the color work section. I think that would be the best choice. Um, but I'm hoping I don't have to do that. We'll see if I wear it a couple of times. Um, but yeah, really happy how this turned out. I think it's gorgeous. It's just much, 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 much too hot to wear it right now. Um, this is the first time out of her patterns. The other ones I've done had short rows below the color work and then after the sleeve separation. This one does all of the short rows almost immediately after casting on. So the back of the neck, you can see there's a larger section of that teal um, than the front of the neck. And then the neckline on this is I just chose to use the rolled neckline. I it, I kind of like it. It's the one that she uses most often and I kind of like it better than, um, it's, it's not that I like it better than ribbing, but I hate doing a ribbed cast on. Uh, like it was it Italian cast on. I don't like doing those. So if I can get away with the rolled um, neck, that's what I tend to do. And I think it looks fine, especially with the eye cord bottom on the sleeves. So that's the only thing I finished knitting. I have two sweaters that are currently in progress, but I'll show those to you later on in the video. In terms of bras, I made one bra this month and I do have a video that corresponds with this, sort of like a, a project log, which is just, you know, stopping along the way and showing like what the next steps are gonna be. Uh, this is another self-drafted mono wire bra. I think it's really, really pretty. I love the colors a lot. Uh, I've done sort of a t-shirt style scoop neck in lime bra tool from the Tailor Made shop and then done a lace overlay, which gives you sort of like a V neckline appearance on it. And I really think it turned out great. So, as I said, the bra tool came from the tailor-made shop. All of the findings are in Fern from Bra Builders. And then the lace is something that I purchased several years ago from AliExpress. I'm not sure that it's available anymore, um, but it definitely looks nice and bright and summery. So I had a, one yard of lace and that was just enough to eke out the cups, the front band with the scalloped edge. And then I was able to just do sort of like a mirrored small bits of lace on the back band, which I think looks fine, even though it's not fully lace, it still um, has the same effect in that two-tone effect with the lace and the green back band material. I think it looks cool. So very happy with this bra. After I had made the rash guard for myself, Tony wanted one for him as well. So I decided, I, I did his chest measurement and then I compared it to the pattern and I ended up choosing a size 2XL for him, which was about 
two sizes larger than his bust measurement or chest measurement would have indicated. Um, but I figured a 2XL would give him about 8% ease. I made a mock-up of it just really, really fast in some leftover scrap material I had, um, and he felt it was too tight. So he needed another two inches um, added around the torso, but the sleeves were good. They just needed to be a little bit longer. So the first one I made for him is this whale one. He was really excited by this whale fabric. I have a swimsuit out of this fabric already, so now we can sort of like be matchy-matchy, which is a little bit cringy, but okay. Um, so I did whale fabric for the main thing, and then I did a contrast collar and some leftover material, as well as a contrast cuff for this one. And the other thing that he had asked for is for it to be a full zip. So the zip uh, is a separating zip, goes all the way down. I used a sports zipper that's like molded plastic because um, I'm hoping that will hold up in the water a little bit better than the traditional like coil style zipper. So that's the whale one. And then the other one I made for him is in like a stark white. So this white fabric, or the whale one came fabric came from Minerva.com. This fabric came from the Fabric Fairy. I really, really have enjoyed the Fabric Fairy fabrics that I've gotten. They seem high quality to me. Um, so for this guy, it's just optic white. I actually think it fits pretty well on me. It's definitely a bit looser on me than it is on him, but I can see myself wearing this like for the walk or something if I wanted like a lightweight jacket to keep like the sun off of my arms and stuff like that. So I might make one of these for myself or <clears throat> I might steal his from time to time because I think it looks pretty good. So that is the two rash guards that I made for him. I had a fair amount of this white material left over so I went ahead and made some swimsuits for myself. So the first thing I did was I made a Serena crop top and the Serena crop top comes from So Swimmingly. I purchased this pattern from Etsy uh, and it, you know, it looks like a pretty tame crop top from the front, but the back has really, really fun and interesting design. I'm sure I'm not showing it very well to you right now. So I'll go ahead and insert a picture of this on a mannequin so you can get an idea of what the back looks like, but super, super fun. I did this all in swimsuit material, like lined it in swimsuit material as well. Uh, so it can be used in the water or it can be used for workouts. Either way, I think should be fine. And then to go with that, I made uh, some matching just white bottoms, very simple and clean. These are the same bottoms I made last month, so I don't have much more to say about them. And I made a Green Style Creations Power Sports Bra as well. And this one is using the sort of racer back. And again, this is using swimsuit material so it can go in the water, but it should be fine as well to work out in because swimsuit material is designed to dry rather quickly, so it should be fine. Um, not much to say about this, right? It's just a pretty, pretty basic, boring sports bra. Um, but the reason I wanted the sports bra is because I also made another rash guard for myself. So my mom sent me some leftover fabric from her making a swimsuit and I was able to sort of play around and get this rash guard. So I didn't have enough to do the sleeves. So the sleeves are in that same white, which I think is fine. Um, but I used the flower material for the body sections of this rash guard. Uh, and I put in a three quarter zip on this one. So the zip ends right about here, like just below my rib cage. Um, so I can leave it fully zipped up or if I have like that white sports bra on underneath it, right, I can just unzip it a little and it looks a little bit more cool. Uh, I did have to put a seam down the center back of this guy, which I, I was unfortunate because I didn't need to, but um, I think it's okay. You, you do see the flowers get cut off just a little bit right here, but I don't think the seam is, is too, too bad. Um, it's just not perfect, but I do like this, this rash guard pattern. I think it's, it's, a really nice addition to my stable patterns. And then I was able to eke out some matching floral bottoms to go with this as well. So I can either use these bottoms or the white ones I showed earlier. So that is everything that I have sewn up in the month of July. Uh, so now let's get to works in progress. So I have two sweaters in progress right now. The first one is another Knit Love Wool 
color work pattern. I'm kind of obsessed. Obsessed. This one is the pattern um, silver lining, I believe, uh, and I'm using two yarns held together for each of the colors. So for the yellow color, it's drops Lima in the color Goldenrod, and then I'm holding it with the Kid Silk in the color Curry. So those are the two that I'm holding for the main. Uh, and then for the color work section, it's these same yarns, but in the color Off White for both of them. So I really like how it's looking. It's looking a little bit oversized, and I think that's because uh, my yarn is a little bit bigger than what the pattern calls for. I did go down two sizes, and I went down in my needles as well to try to get closer to gauge, but I'm still looking to be a little bit oversized, but that's fine. It can just be a nice, fluffy, soft, big sweater. Um, I think this will be really nice to have in the fall, so I'm hoping to get it finished. Obviously, you know, the body's done, I just need to do the sleeves, and those generally take me around three to four days to get done. So hopefully I will have it done um, this month. But it's really nice and soft, which I think will be lovely to wear um, in the cooler months. I do like how that mohair just gives it much more like a blurry, like Gaussian filter look. So that's that one. And then the second sweater that I'm working on is the September sweater, Petite Knit, that's the pattern. Um, this is my first time doing brioche stitch, so I wanted to, to sort of expand my technique repertoire. I've been stuck on color work for a while because I really love it, but I wanted to go ahead and do a brioche knit. Um, so for this one, uh, it's worked flat for a long time until you join in the body. So I'm, I, I'm right now I'm on the front of it and I still have to work down a couple more inches before I can join for the body. Um, it looks a little bit small, but I have read that brioche will grow side to side. So I'm thinking that's, it'll be fine once it's finished. Um, but I'm really enjoying how it's going. It's taking me a little bit longer because it's a new to me stitch, but I like how it looks and I, I really like how the increases and decreases add to the design of all the different ribs on there. Uh, so for this one, I have two yarns held together, and that is the Drops Alpaca, which is 100% alpaca, and this is the colorway Forest Green, and then I have the Dark Green Drops Kid Silk. Uh, they don't particularly look like they go well together just holding them. This one is more yellow toned, and this one is more blue toned. But when they're held together, I think it gives you a really nice um, dimensional rich color, not so like um, blocked, like it has a lot of tonality differences, which I think uh, is, is pretty cool. And I think that's because you have those two different tones of green. So excited for this one to be finished up as well. And then the last project that I want to work on this month, I bought a pair of jeans from The Gap, which I really, really love the fit on the rise of these. So these are the sky high true skinny jeans um, and I bought them in a tall so they're proportionately longer as well in the rise so I, I measured it it's about a 13 inch rise in the front and this fits me just below my natural waist but I really really like the fit of these so I want to go ahead and copy this pattern so that I can recreate it myself so as I said I love the fit in here of the jeans I do find that the legs are not skinny enough for me so I'm going to use the not the Morgan the skinny jeans ginger jeans from um, closet core patterns uh, to copy over the leg because I do like how the leg fits on that pattern. So closet core ginger jeans for the bottom and then trying to copy this over for the top of the pant. Uh, so far I have my pattern, my initial pattern drafted, but I want to do just like a short length mock-up just to make sure everything's fitting correctly uh, before I go ahead and cut this out of my Cone Mill S Jean denim, which has been languishing in my stash for about five years now. So I really want to get it sewn up. And if I get it sewn up in something that fits like this, that would be fantastic. I hope everybody has enjoyed all of the knitting and sewing I've been doing this month, as well as a look at the projects I'll be getting up to in the next couple weeks. I'll see everyone next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.